friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about dehydrated potatoes. I just want to give you some updates. I did go over some of this in a this and that video several weeks back, but I wanted to go into a little bit more details and just give you my thoughts on this and using them. So last year I did a video on dehydrating the chunks and the slices, which I'll be linking to you down below so you can see that full video and then i think it was the year before i did a video on dehydrating mashed potatoes which i'll also be linking to down below and so i wanted to talk about my experience with these and some things i'm definitely going to try next year so first let's start off with the mashed potatoes this i'm really really happy with it's all that's in here is potatoes. And you'll see that when you watch the video, how I did that, but I did cook them, mash them, spread them on my trays, dehydrate them, and then powder them up. And then one of the things I did along the way, which I think I did a video on, was making coal cannon using these. And it sure made it a lot easier. Now in that batch, I actually also used my dehydrated turkey bone broth in there, which actually gave it a deeper color. And that's why in the picture, it does look a little brownish. And then even since then, I've tried it again, just using plain water, some spices, but other dehydrated goods like dehydrated cabbage and dehydrated meat. And that just made it so easy to whip up some coal cannon. So I really, really like having these on hand. I'll definitely be doing more of these this next year. And then, um, and th just so you know, this year, 2024, I did not put in an annual garden. I just have my perennials because I'm giving my garden a sabbatical rest. And uh, that's why I didn't grow any potatoes. I got a few potatoes that came up on their own, but I probably could have got more if I wasn't letting the chickens roam free because they'll dig up the potatoes and eat them. So they love potatoes. And then, um, yeah, so that was, I really, really like this. And then the other one I really liked was doing these slices. Now you can see that um, they did, my slices did get a little darker. They weren't quite this dark when I put them in there. They are vacuum sealed. They are stored in a dark room, but they're still really, really good. It may have something to do with the, I did coat my pans um, in coconut oil on the bottom and on, you know, and the potato to help keep them from turning brown while they were baking. At least I think that's what I did. And that could have something to do with it or it ha could have to do with the fact that they're mostly yellow potatoes that I did this with and where russets might hold their color better. But regardless, they're still really good. I did end up making some moussaka out of them, which was my main reason of having them like this, so that when I feel like making moussaka, it would just make the process a lot easier. It's just, they're pretty almost ready to go. They just need to be rehydrated. So what I did in this case was, if I'd been thinking correctly, I would have done this in two separate pots. But since we had some sun and my solar, I set my solar oven out and I put the potatoes and all the other dehydrated ingredients I was adding, such as onions, garlic, carrots, uh, what a, uh, green beans, and I can't remember what else. I just threw them all in the pot with some water and then just let them sit in the solar oven so the heat could also more quickly rehydrate them. And that actually worked really good, but again, <laughs> If I'd been thinking, I would have put them in two separate pots since with the masaka, you do want to layer the potatoes on the bottom and then again on the top and then everything else goes in the middle. Then you pour your sauce over the top. And if you're interested in my moussaka recipe, it's actually my own creation because it's a combination of the what I think are the, the best of the two, the Serbian moussaka and the Greek moussaka. They're even spelled differently. But I took the, my my favorite elements from both types and put them together and created my own recipe that way. So again, you'll find that recipe with also the written recipe or at least a link to it in the description box down below. So don't forget to click on more or show more somewhere down here below the video screen to open the description box and find all the links I'll be putting there in. The third method I use for dehydrating and I was really nervous about this one was to dice them up and you can see the size of the chunks I used. But I thought I would try it and I just did a little bit at first and then tried cooking them up. I'm like, this isn't bad. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do more. But the tricky thing about doing the chunks is you're more 
likely, it can be harder to tell if they're dried all the way through to the center and they can hold their heat longer when you're letting them cool off before vacuum sealing your jars, which is really, really important. Anytime you're dehydrating anything, you want to make sure it is fully cooled down to room temperature before you vacuum seal in your jars because what can happen is the heat can cause your jars to sweat and then you're going to get mold. And so you want to make sure that doesn't happen. And I did end up with these. I did end up with a couple of jars that turned moldy and I think it's because not with these, just with this style. And it could be because there were either some that were still warm when I stuck them in there or maybe there were some that weren't fully dehydrated. So if I do the diced up version again, I'm gonna cut them half as small, which I might do because one of the things I did, my favorite way to use these and the only way I really liked using them was to is to throw them into soups or if I'm doing a, like a roast, like a beef roast or a chicken, and I'm gonna put water in the pan anyway, I threw the, I just poured some in there and that worked out pretty good. Plus it's uh, getting the flavor from the chicken or the turkey or the roast that you're cooking and that worked really good. I did try soaking them in hot water and then frying them. That's okay, I mean, it's doable, but not near as good as if you're using fresh. So, I don't mind having some of these on hand for adding to soups and the like, but it's not gonna be my favorite method that I'd maybe only do a couple of jars of, but definitely doing plenty of these. And then the other one I would like to at least try, even though I don't make hash browns hardly ever, if I'm gonna do potatoes for breakfast, I'm gonna fry them up anyway. I'm just gonna dice them and fry them but I might try doing the hash brown style. I've had several people say that they do that and they love that. So I might try some next year and if I really like it, maybe do a bunch more like that. And then the other one was people uh, doing like French fries and then uh, dehydrating those. So I might try some of that too. Some people said they had pretty good results with that. So that's my experience so far and what I'd also like to try, but I wanna rehash something so that if you're going to use your dried potatoes in a soup or something that's, uh, you know, anything with a liquid in it already, you can just throw them in there as is. No problem there, just throw them in there because you're cooking it anyway, you got the liquid anyway, it's going to rehydrate those potatoes as is. But if like with the slices, you're gonna use them for something like making scallop potatoes or the masaka or anything else where you're wanting those thin slices and you're not putting a lot of liquid because like masaka the sauce you know or even your uh, potatoes au gratin you don't there's not as much liquid in it so you're going to be better off to soak them in hot water for a period of time until they're fully rehydrated and then layer them just like you would any other like a fresh potato which by the way when i did that i mean once these were soaked in the hot water they were just like i had just like taking a fresh potato, sliced it and baked it. And they were really good. They turned out quite good. I'm very, very pleased with this. So definitely doing this again. So anyway, please share with us down below for the sake of those who would like to learn more about dehydrating potatoes. What are your favorite ways, even if you already shared it on my this and that video a few weeks back, share it again down below your favorite ways to dehydrate potatoes. Your, your favorite shape, and then your favorite ways to use them in various dishes. So I hope you enjoyed my update to the dehydrated potatoes, and I'll be doing more of these next year, including also doing dry canning of fresh potatoes. I cannot wait to try this. I've heard so many good things about it. So everybody that says they've tried it said they love it, and they're not, they're not gonna can potatoes any other way. So once I do that, I'll definitely give you an update on that as well. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.